why would five people from a church in Hawthorne travel together to a remote Aboriginal community in the Northern Territory? We hope you enjoy these stories from St Colm's first church partnership trip in August to visit the people of Gilly. watching this video. I'm Luina and I'm here in Gallie in the Northern Territory uh, with a group of five of us from St Collins um, helping out with some building works and um, our church partnership here with the people. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick tour of, um, of where we are. So this is our little tent camp that we've set up um, where we've been spending basically only our nights because it's pretty unbearable during the day. Our wonderful hire car and trailer take you around this way. Um, this is where we had fellowship last night um, with the Aboriginal people which was wonderful. Um, in the background there um, we've got some sacred trees. Um, to this side in the distance there is Estelle's house. Uh, we'll just walk through it this way. Daisy and David's house over here. And the White House, I'm not sure who lives there. This is the back of our camp area. And we've got our supplies tent. We've been keeping most of our food. This is where we've been having our relaxing afternoon nap time. And here is the building that we've been working on um, to convert into um, a church space um, with a lockable room towards the back. So we've just knocked out that wall um, so that the breeze can come through. Uh, over here we've got Mandy and Jojo's house. The kids have all just come back from school and they're probably inside while it's hot out here. And here's the other side of our building. That noise is Kelvin using the angle grinder. So we've got this room at the back, which we've, we're not touching this trip. And this room here, which we've converted, um, we've turned it into a room that can be locked, which is what they'd like, so that they can have somewhere to put their musical instruments. Um, so we've put up um, some wire on the window, so it's secure. And we fixed this door. We fixed the door because it was jammed shut before, so now that they can shut the door and put a padlock on it. And we go back into the main part of the church. Say hello, Naomi. Hello. There's Naomi. Um, there's Reg over there. So we knocked out the doors over here. Say hello, Greg. Hello, Greg. No, 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 hello, Luina. 
just getting some power for the new one. So, ah, so we're currently working on um, this front part of the church um, to create a door so people can come, come and go this way. So we've already taken the um, window parts out. Um, Kelvin's used his favourite tool, the ang- angle grinder, to punch that hole in. Um, and pretty soon that's all going to be opened up. So let's come around and see who's outside. There's Kelvin with his favourite tool. Say hi, Kelvin. Oh, are you videoing? Sure am. Hello. <laughs> Hello. This is my favourite tool. Yep. This is my baby. <laughs> we did have two of those and one of them broke. Very sad. I don't know where Janice is, but she is also here with us somewhere. Actually, I can see her. There she is. Go say hi to Janice. And then we'll, we'll have completed a lap of... Uh, Janice is putting on sunscreen, which is very smart. Hi, Janice. Hi, Luena. And we're done. Okay. Thanks for watching. She's first up, and uh, all of a sudden, she, she calls out, did, did we have a dead wallaby here last night when we went to bed? <laughs> <laughs> and so we all stick our heads out our tent and go, pardon? No, why do you ask? <laughs> no, why do you ask? Well, we have a dead wallaby here now. Oh, okay. It's behind the trailer. Okay. So there ensues a conversation between us, you know, Kelvin's going, I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to take it away, and no, 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 I'm thinking where. <laughs> Uh, Luina wants to get rid of it as soon as possible because it's very unhygienic having a dead animal in your camp, obviously. Um, so that makes sense. Uh, and, and I kind of, you know, my brain's racing thinking, what do we do about a dead wallaby? Uh, because given that they'd barely spoken to us the previous day, I wondered, I wonder if they've brought the dead wallaby for us. <laughs> and then <they're probably laughs> you're, you're the as meat. <laughs> I thought, no, that doesn't make sense. Surely somebody would have spoken to us. So as I explained to everybody, no, what, what we do is we go over and we ask the people, we ask somebody, what do you want us to do with your dead animal on your land? So I did, I went and asked Daisy, and I said, oh, we've got a dead wallaby, what would you like us to do with it? And she said, oh, feed it to the dogs, bring it over. And I think, oh, looks like I'm getting picking up a dead wallaby. So, you know, that was before breakfast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, those are things that you don't expect to hear. Uh, you know, did we have a dead wallaby last night? No, we didn't. So there you go. This community, because uh, they're not fixed. And um, so some dogs peed on my tent, which was not the greatest thing in the world. But other than that, um, the trip was all good. And, and, and the main highlight for me, there were four of them. One was just completing the building. I fell in love. I fell in love with the angle miner. <laughs> so <laughs> Greg tried to fry it on my hands and was unsuccessful. Uh, just just being able to, f- to do a job and uh, be satisfied <coughs> with it, be happy with it, and the local people there at Shingles, they were happy with it, um, and doing something useful, that was very satisfying. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was happy with that. Um, uh, another thing, another highlight was just worshipping in the evening around the campfire under the stars mm-hmm. uh, was Janice playing the violin um, and Estelle, I think it was Estelle playing the keyboard and we were singing songs of praise to Jesus. That was, that was very special, that was, that was a highlight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a, 
little boy called Bryson who didn't really fit in with all the other kids, who was mainly by himself, but followed all the adults around, including us. Um, and he was so cute. He is a highlight in, in itself. The final highlight was um, going for this walk to, to their spring where they had permanent water and where they drew water with a pump to their, their houses. And apparently there are mermaids there, rainbow colored mermaids. I didn't see any. Um, and apparently also if you drink the water, if you're a girl, you get pregnant without the help of a man. Um, Neither Luina or Naomi drank the water. <laughs> so we don't know, maybe. Neither did I. Uh, did you drink the water, Kill? No, I didn't. I didn't. Never fed you. No. It um, doesn't have any effect on men. Um, and then this walk to the cave at the top of a, a little, little rocky hill where you can see all around for miles uh, the bush and the cave paintings. Um, that was very special. So, yeah, I think, you know, it was uh, all of those things, the people, the work, the building. Just as a final comment, uh, on reflection after I came back, I came back feeling like I, you know, I was 10 years younger. Um, I felt 10 years younger and I thought, why is that? And I think it's because their culture is not about creativity, I mean, sorry, not about productivity. There's no hurry, they don't hurry. Like, they just walk slowly. It's partly because of the heat, but also partly because of their culture. There's, you know, you don't really have to achieve, there's no real pressure to achieve anything in a set uh, space of time. And I just thought, well, there's gotta be some kind of a balance between the Western culture where everything's like, up there to achieve things and uh, and where you know you can just go through life uh, at a leisurely pace, pace without having the pressure to achieve things and I was thinking if we can live so that um, we're not harried but still achieve a lot that would be good um, and I'm not sure God wants us to be hurried all the time um, either. So that was something I thought we could we could try to learn from them. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, um, what I think is probably the most important story for me to tell is uh, about Daisy, who was one of the indigenous women at the at the site. Um, so we mentioned that we had fellowship with them um, at night and around the campfire. We didn't have it on Monday and Tuesday, it started on Wednesday when they just brought us firewood and said we're having fellowship with you um, and from there with, you know. Um, so on th it was Thursday fellowship, it was dark and we were singing songs, the songs that Janice and Greg had brought, so they had brought out printouts of the lyrics and so I was, I was sitting next to Daisy and I hadn't really spoken to her much before, but I was sitting next to Daisy. And she had, the, she had the lyrics there and I was holding the torch for her so she could read it because it was dark. So I was sitting next to her and like after the song she turns to me and she says, so when are you leaving? And I'm thinking, well we're leaving, so I tell her we're leaving Saturday morning so today's Thursday so we'll stay here, we'll be here tomorrow and the day, the morning after that we'll be leaving. And then she, she says something which took me quite aback. And she looked a bit sad, I, I imagine she looked a bit sad, but just a little bit. And she said, and then you go home and we never see you again, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. And I was, and I was um, and it took me back a bit, but we had, like, we, we had, we were actually planning to come back. Like, Janice and Greg at least had made the commitment to come back every year. And I was thinking I would probably come back. So I say to her, well, like, no, we can come back next year. And Janice was there and she, she explained, if you want us to come back, we can come back. If you don't want us to come back, we won't come back. And so she says, yeah, I'd like you to come back. And then what, what was, what was um, interesting was not that conversation, but what happened afterwards. Because like I said, I hadn't really spoken to her. I didn't have anything to do with this woman previously. But all of a sudden, she, says, she turns to me and she says, 
I'm going to come, come over tomorrow morning and I'm going to show you the sugar bait trees where there, there's honey in the sugar bait trees. Where there's sometimes honey in the sugar bait trees. And so the next morning she does. She comes over in the morning and she says, I'm going to go show you the sugar bait trees now. And she takes me and shows me which ones were the sugar bait trees. When it's it soy, there was honey in them. There wasn't any honey at that time, but you know, we checked. And then she's, she's talking to me and she says, when you come back, I'm going to show you how to cook bush tucker. I'm going to show you how to cook kangaroo on the rocks and turkey on the rocks. And this shadow explaining to me about how you do it. You dig this hole and you put this fire in it. And she's like, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you all the bush medicine. I'm going to show you all the plants. I'm going to show you when you come back, when you come back, when she can come back. And the whole day, like, like the Friday, it was the Friday. And we basically had our day off and we had finished the work and that's when we went on the walk. And she was talking to me the whole day, just all the things. When you come back, when you come back, when you come back. And it was, I was just like, I remember like Janice and Greg talking about how important it was to them that this wasn't just a once-off trip, that we do need to actually make a commitment to keep coming back. And this just kind of like, this kind of made it real for me and kind of, I'm going to have to go back. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back. I don't think I have any choice not to. Um, First of all, <coughs> uh, I'll talk a bit about David. Uh, David was really the only uh, uh, Indigenous man we, we spoke to much because uh, we had thought that we'd be dealing with Jojo and Mandy, uh, who we'd been told were the kind of most biculturally aware, is the, the term the Bishop uses. Uh, but uh, the day we got there, we found out, or the day before we got there, we found out that they weren't going to be there. Uh, they were going to um, Catherine to deal with some tax affairs and stuff. Uh, we never really found out what they had to go to Catherine for, but they did, so they weren't there. Uh, so I asked Jojo as he was leaving, okay, well, who, who should I talk to about anything to do with the building? And he said, oh, David will look after it, it'll be fine. Okay, fine. Uh, so, uh, so David came and, and, uh, and talked to me, and, yeah, and the first thing he did was uh, to say to me, uh, oh, you're sitting up camp over there, uh, we'll, we'll get some drums for you. <laughs> drums. You'll get some drums for us. So I said, okay, that sounds great. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then, what do you saw the drums? Like, they, it became clear once they, uh, when they, he, so he drove off, uh, found some, some young blokes to help him and came back and uh, put, put the drums up to block off that piece of roadway so that people wouldn't drive past our camp and get dust all through our camp, which was, which was just wonderful. They, they knew exactly how to look after us. We, we didn't understand what they needed to do, but they did, so it was all good. Uh, and then the other, the, the second thing, that, so so I, we did have a bit of back and forth with David over the next couple of days, and then on Thursday afternoon, I think, um, he came into the the building as we're working uh, with a little um, iPad Mini and said, "Can I take some video of you?" Um, yeah, okay. Um, What's it for? Uh, and, uh, and yeah, he was about to go off to uh, Norlinia College uh, mm -hmm. to do, um, he and his wife, uh, David and Daisy are a couple. Um, they, they were going to go together, I understand, to Norlinia to do a media course to learn about how to communicate about what they're doing and their, their, um, the life of their <coughs> kind of church. Um, and Norlinia, the theological college, was running these courses to help them. To, um, get their story out. So uh, yeah, so he wanted to get some video so that he could take it with him on this course. And so we said to him, uh, okay, well you'll, uh, when, when, you're, uh, uh, when you've made it, we want to see it. <laughs> so hopefully, um, one way or another, we'll get to see what he, he does with that video. So he took some video of us, um, very similar to what Lorena uh, yeah. did. Um, so he did his own version of that. Uh, so that was David. But the other thing I've got just, talk about is um, uh, on one of the fellowship nights uh, Estelle decided that um, she wanted to tell us this story so I'll tell you the story as best I can because uh, uh, I think she wanted to get across to us that um, they hadn't always lived like this uh, and that was part of the, the, the reason we had that picture of the of the stove um, 
is that that spot where that stove is is clearly very important to them because it's it's where their camp was uh, um, before they got ownership of the land, uh, and the, where where they live now was the um, cattle station, uh, and they lived kind of on the edge, uh, down closer to the to the spring where they could get their water. Uh, and uh, anyway, so this was the spot where they, they lived. And uh, so, so this night, Estelle decided that she wanted to tell us this story about uh, her uncle, uh, the, her father's brother. Uh, and uh, her uncle was, had, hard to remember the, the, the words she used, but her uncle was, he was different. Uh, he always walked around with a big leather coat on. Uh, and we've been there in the cold part of the year, <laughs> um, trying to imagine somebody walking around all the time, including the hot part of the year, with a big leather coat on, uh, just, just unimaginable. Anyway, but so this, so clearly, uh, this guy was a bit, he was a bit, he was just unusual, and uh, and people made fun of him, uh, and uh, uh, and then uh, one night. Uh, or whatever. One day he, he said that he was going to be taken away. Uh, and so he knew that this was what was going to happen. He was going to be taken away. Uh, and, uh, and so that night, uh, her father couldn't sleep. Uh, and his uncle slept in a... So that this time they're living uh, down by the spring in the, the place where there's just the stove now. Uh, and they were living there and her father had a, was in one room and her uncle uh, was living a, uh, a few metres away in, a, in another building. And, uh, uh, and her father couldn't sleep that night. And, uh, and then uh, he was woken up and, and, and looked out and, uh, his, and he saw um, his brother, his still uncle, uh, um, being taken away uh, and he saw, so he saw uh, a family of winged lions come, uh, two adults and some babies, and they took this uncle and took him away to Jerusalem, uh, and he was never seen again. That was the story. I don't know what it means. I have no idea what it means. Uh, but it was clearly a very important story to her. Uh, that, and she wanted us to know this story. Uh, before, before we left, one of the things I was a bit worried about was that we might get there and the people might not really want to talk to us, or we just might not really have much to do with them, or they might not be there. Um, and I think yeah, my first fears were allayed pretty quickly. Um, so Daisy, as you mentioned already, um, she was really lovely. She just um, came up, it must have been the second day that we were there, or it might have even been the first day, and uh, with her phone and was showing us pictures of her children, and um, she was just really open and happy to share her life with us and asking about our lives as well. Um, and, and also pretty quickly got the sense of how easy it is to talk to people because there's not really any awkwardness or no one's shy and you can kind of ask questions and not get in trouble. Um, that's something I was a bit worried about, but it turns out you can just be really blunt and, and no, one's, no one's offended by it. Because um, we learnt this because they would describe people in, in ways that would be really unflattering to us. Like how Estelle talked about one of her grandsons as being like, oh, there's this one, this one, and then there's the big fat one, Zachariah. Like, okay, that. Um, and I was on a bit of a mission the whole time, trying to work out how everyone was related, just because I was really curious, like how are all the kids related to everyone? And, um, so it got to the point where I could just say to the kids, oh, so who's the loud old lady with the white hair? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so. And they're not, like, that's, that's fine. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. That's how, we, that's how they talk about people. Like, oh, yeah, she's the loud one. She's the quiet one. Um, but, yeah, I, I especially um, had a lot of fun with the kids who were there. Again, didn't know that there were going to be any kids there. Um, we brought along a football and a soccer ball, which um, we brought in Catherine. Um, and that sort of... Yeah, that helped a bit because the kids just loved those. They quickly broke the soccer ball, um, but the football they weren't happy with. And, um, and Bryson became basically one of our team. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he was a little, the little kid that you saw. Um, he came with us on the bushwalk. And, um, How old is Bryson? How old? 
Uh, he said he was eight, um, but I suspect he's seven because they count their first year as one. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we picked up some of the other kids that came out asking questions that um, for us as parents, I think, you know, his father, I think, had passed away, and his mother was an alcoholic somewhere else. So um, neither of them lived there, and I think he might have been suspended from school at one point. And, um, didn't seem to sort of click as much with the other children. I think that's probably why he just hung out with us <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but he was very sweet. And, yeah, praised, don't they? Yeah. Um, but there was, we used to have, um, we had afternoon naps, so we'd do a bit of work and then have lunch and then, um, so there wasn't really anywhere, we didn't have couches or anything. Um, so we literally just lay a, laid a tarp or down on the concrete <laughs> and had a light on there because that's the hell I could do. Um, so it was one day where we all had to lie down and sort of fell to sleep and then um, woke up at some point and discovered that Bryson had also fallen asleep with us. And he was at the table. Everybody was pretty jealous. Yeah. But he ate with us as well. Like we had leftovers and, um, and because our, was it the last night? Um, yeah. There was a bunch of other kids as well. Um, so there was Ronald who was in the selfie with um, Kelvin. Yeah, I learned how to take my phone, so we just took a heap of selfies. Um, but he and um, Shailen and I think not Marie was there, and Anna Rose and Jackie, um, who are yeah, similar age, um, they, they came we had heaps of leftovers, and they just were like, do you want to try some? And I don't know what they really eat, um, how much food they have themselves, but they wolfed it down. Um, it was, this was by, by the end, this was the last night, so we didn't have any refrigeration, so it was purely a tinned food meal, it was tuna morning with just all tin stuff. So it wasn't the most high quality food, but... It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> we liked it. They liked it, yeah. Um, yeah. So I do miss those kids, they were really sweet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just, there was one time that I was in lunch or breakfast or something and suddenly I just hear Bryson calling out, Alina, Alina, <laughs> can I play football now? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, you can do that. Um, because um, cause we only had one angle grinder after the first one broke, there actually wasn't all that much that um, I could do work-wise. And I'm so, I guess I, I found I could be useful in doing the cooking and hanging out with the kids. So that's what I did most of the time. Um, I loved it.